Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Stank Gamers, and welcome. So today, I've built myself another weapon system. Now, many of you have been asking for something that can orbit an atmosphere, orbit a planet, and accurately engage stations with a very devastating warhead package. And this is exactly what we've came up with. Now, we can engage moving targets. We could if we were a little bit more precise on the guidance system, but more likely due to the time it actually takes for these missiles to get from out of atmosphere down to the planet's surface, it's got to be really a station or outpost to engage it and have some sort of devastating effect. So we're using GPS guidance to actually affect that, and if we pop up our hood, we'll go down to the planet's surface with spectator cam, and I'll show you the little station we've got out here. So I've actually got some GPS coordinates marked already, so I can just find the location. So as we go down here, you can see we've got a little bit of a listing post this player is using to spot ships that are passing by this planet. And it looks like he's even trying to build a silo, so he might be trying to construct a missile of his own to shoot down our orbit or missile platform. So we really need to remove this threat before it happens. So we'll have a quick look. So we've got some sort of storage yard there on the left, as well as the silo and bunker building there, as well as the silo. So we'll target that. We'll head back up to our station in space and we'll target that with our missiles and eliminate it before it even becomes a threat. And this is what this weapon system is all about. It's about eliminating the threat before it even has a chance to react and you're not going to be able to see these missiles coming down from space until the last second and your base is completely destroyed so let's set this up so quickly before we launch this is i'm just going to talk them over so we've got the warhead itself that is the front chamber completely packed with warheads and enough explosives to create quite a decent crater and penetrate two to three layers of heavy armor we've got the hydrogen cell here the hydrogen cell also backs up the warhead crushing the warhead against the target as well as providing enough power to get this up to maximum speed now you can cut this down to one hydrogen tank but i do like the length or the look of a longer missile it just looks a little bit better so we're back up to the second platform we've got four in total so we're going to actually begin at the start of procedure for launching these and it's really simple we've already locked in the targets for your gps down there and now all we're going to do is we're going to charge up the engines so you can hear the thrusters powering away at maximum thrust the station is locked into position so there's not going to be any problem now the second thing we need to do is start up the computers aboard each of the rockets so we can actually find guidance so that's number two and then the third stage is launching these missiles so let's hit number three now fingers crossed everything goes right and i've not launched these all at once before so we'll have to just see exactly what goes on so merge blocks disengaged and it looks like we've got a little bit of a problem okay so aaron made a little bit of a boo-boo i've realized since i connected to the merge box it didn't used to happen like this these convert themselves back to ships so i'll just show you a second one launching so we'll actually press k on this and we'll access this menu and all we have to do is turn it into a ship quickly so there we go, convert to ship, it finds the target location, and once it's find that target location, it'll actually begin a boost of energy towards the target, and then it'll pulse itself, turning on and off its reactor, so there we go, it's boosted on, we can actually see that going down to the planet, I'll launch another two, and we'll catch up with the rockets as they go down, so there we go, we'll just access the menus again, quickly turn on the ship, so I didn't even realize that converting these to a ship when I tested them before it seemed to just fly out But I guess the whole station was a ship so that missile's about to launch and we've got this one That's about to go as well So we convert this one to a ship info convert to ship and we'll follow this one down with spectator So there we go It's finding its target location and once it finds its target location It hits an initial boost of the thruster and it's actually going down now It stops the thruster to actually save a little bit of the power and it will boost again when the timer block comes around so it'll ma meet the basically maximum velocity before it even gets down to the atmosphere. But we'll actually pick up with the rest of these rockets. So there's number two. We've got number three and four all heading towards the target location. But we'll have to see just how accurate these missiles are. Now the problem with the targeting computers on these is that the, the remote control block doesn't like working with planets and it turns itself off. So I've had to try to cut myself around that by reactivating it with a timer block. So if we just have a quick look down the side, you'll be able to see a timer block on one of the sides there. And that is ticking over, trying to reactivate the actual navigation. And you can see they look like they're on target at the moment. They're on target to the storage site, but it's going to be quite a flight. So what I'm going to do now is just cut back and we'll get there when we actually arrive at the target. So the missiles have actually caught up now. You can see the thrusters have been activated and they're going straight towards the actual missile silo and the little base down there. We've got one, two, three, four, and they seem to actually caught up to each other quite well. So that's pretty good. I guess the thrusters must have activated at slightly different time. Let's actually see if we get any good impacts on target. So it looks like we're actually all going for the one target bunker. So that bunker is going to be completely destroyed. 
Okay, so we didn't hit the silo. All the missiles must have been targeted towards the actual bunker silo. But you can see if there was anything in here, this would have been absolutely destroyed. I'm going to launch another two or three. And then um, we'll basically just hop back down to this atmospheric level and we'll see them impact again. So another 203 have been launched. I've just been waiting a little bit while they come back down. So you can see we've got two coming in now. We've got a third one. Yeah, we've got a third one chasing it behind. And these ones... Oh, that was a direct hit on the missile silo. And we've got a secondary hit and looks like the silo is coming down. Where's this third one impacting? I guess the guidance must have been lost since the silo collapsed into multiple pieces. It must have confused it a little bit. We've got the silo down as well, so you can just see how effective guiding missiles from out the atmosphere down into an environment like this would actually destroy a complete station. And this guy wouldn't even expect what to do. I mean, even if he had turrets, he might intercept one or two missiles, but we'll, we'll, we'll line up a third missile and we'll send it down on his storage bay. So for this final sort of test, what I've done is just decided to spam five or six by copying and pasting them in rather than actually launching them. And you can see these ones haven't been guided at all, but the effect of them impacting around the target area. Did that even hit the silo? Oh, there we go, it created a crater. He was very lucky, look at this. So as you can see, the damage to this small outpost is quite severe. Now, if you increase the amount of warheads in the actual missile itself, you're gonna have much larger craters, but you can see the damage of five or six or even seven or eight missiles can do. We've completely destroyed the radar assembly. We've started to damage the actual storage bunker, but it's pretty much intact, and we've destroyed his main base facility and part of his silo. So if you get these a little bit more accurate, the problem I'm having with the accuracy is since you have to turn the um, actual remote control block on and off because it doesn't work as well in the atmosphere as I'd like it to do because it has to pass through a weird barrier that turns it off. Um, it, it seems to make them a little bit less accurate than I'd like, but still a lot to do. And it's quite fun. If you want a complex build or something that's going to challenge you, then definitely try it and you'll have a very scary weapon to destroy your friends with. Anyway, let's thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.